Hey, Mr. P here. In this video, we're going to talk about the formation of gametes. So how does mitosis and meiosis specifically allow males and females to produce gametes? And by gametes, I mean the sperm cell and egg cell. Those are the cells that are involved in sexual reproduction and require a certain set of divisions in order to not only reduce the number of chromosomes uh, within the cell, but also allow them to mature and um, organize themselves in a way that makes them viable um, sex cells. So, formation of gametes. Let's go. So, the formation of sperm cells is called spermatogenesis. This is the gamete production process that occurs in males. The gametes, specifically sperm cells, are made in the testes in males. And if you look at the left side of the screen, you'll see that within the internal kind of lumen area of the testes, there are a ver like a variety of these seminiferous tubules. Um, these tubules are designed to increase surface area, decrease volume. That's one of the main components or the main kind of unifying themes of biology. Okay. Um, this this organ is structured very well to allow it to function the way that it does. And so the way that it does is to organize itself into a bunch of long, skinny, hollow tubes. These tubes are called seminiferous tubules. And within the tube, if we zoom in farther, you'll see that there is a variety of cells in different stages of both mitosis and meiosis. They start at the exterior okay, as spermatogonia and they mature and divide through mitosis and meiosis as they move internally to the interior lumen of the seminiferous tubule before becoming a mature sperm cell. Once the mature sperm cells are produced, they can kind of navigate the tubules, enter the epididymis, and await um, the sexual reproduction part. There is mitosis and meiosis involved in the production of gametes in both males and females okay there are a bunch of terms that you need to be familiar with like spermatogonia primary spermatocyte secondary spermatocyte spermatids mature sperm cells okay all of them sound similar but they all have different levels of meiotic or mitotic division Okay, so the way that spermatogenesis in males occurs, and again, we'll say this is male, the spermatogonia line the tubules of the testes and divide by mitosis from puberty until death. Nothing happens in the male, um, the, the male testes until puberty. These cells are not being produced, okay? But once puberty is reached at roughly age 13, let's say, the male starts increasing the production of testosterone. That hormone signals the kind of the, the release of these particular cells and therefore the ushering of the mitotic division, which is going to take the spermatogonia and produce primary spermatocytes. Okay, that is a mitotic division. Okay, we're going to take these primordial germ cells, which are not differentiated or not specialized or not uh, matured into viable gametes yet. These primordial germ cells are going to go through mitosis and are going to divide and produce exactly the same daughter cells. Okay, we call these spermatogonia. You will notice that this particular cell with the two chromosomes is exactly the same as these two cells. The only difference is the primordial germ cell has divided via mitosis to produce spermatogonia, which is going to start or be able to start the first meiotic division and ultimately lead us to mature sperm cells. This cell will go through the same process. Okay, It's just for the sake of simplicity, this particular diagram is just showing you one of the spermatogonia uh, producing sperm cells, but this this uh, spermatogonia would also produce four uh, gametes as well. So primordial germ cell is going to go through mitotic division, okay, or mitosis. It's going to basically duplicate its DNA. It's going to then divide um, into two daughter cells that are identically genetically, okay, or identical genetically. Only we call these spermatogonia. Once the spermatogonia are produced, they are here, okay, it goes from here to here. Uh, via mitosis. So mitosis is going to result in those. 
And then once the, the primary spermatocyte is produced, they're going to then go through the first round of meiosis and end up here, which is a secondary spermatocyte. And then they go through meiosis two and they produce spermatids, which are un- mature or non-mature sperm cells okay you'll notice that they don't have their tail they have not matured yet they are just called spermatids at this point um, they can be seen kind of right here okay now once they are produced all they have to do is wait and kind of mature into the mature sperm cells but the spermatids will eventually develop into mature sperm cells this entire process takes roughly 64 days within the male reproductive system and the 64 days is broken up into three 16-day processes. The first 16-day process is the formation of spermatocytes, which is basically mitosis. So mitosis within this spermatogenesis takes 16 days. Meiosis 1, or the production of secondary spermatocytes, is going to take the next 16 days. And then mitosis, or meiosis 2, or the production of these spermatids, is going to take the next 16 days. Once these mitosis and meiosis divisions happen, the spermatids will take roughly 16 days to mature into uh, mature sperm cells and will be available when sexual reproduction is uh, required. Okay, that's how males produce gametes, and those gametes ultimately mature through these different intermediate cells to produce mature sperm cells, uh, which are readily available from puberty until death in a male. They will be produced 24, 7, 365 from puberty until death. Okay, but to produce a group or a batch of mature sperm cells, it takes roughly 64 days within the male. Okay, so how does this compare to females? The gamete production process in females is called oogenesis. It happens roughly the same way, but there are some key differences. First of all, females don't have testes. They have ovaries, and so that is the organ responsible for female gamete production. But the way that these gametes are made is going to be pretty similar in, in the way that they're made. Okay? Cells in the ovary known as oogonia, or oogonium, plural, uh, begin mitosis early in embryonic development and finish a few weeks later. It is a key note to note, uh, or an important note to note, that females are born with all the primary oocytes they will ever have. So that is a key difference between males and females. Males are not born with gametes. Males are going to produce gametes from puberty all the way until death. Females are actually born with all of the kind of primordial gametes, okay, all the primordial germ cells and these oogoniums, so these non-mature gametes that they will ever have. So when they are born, they are basically stocked with all of these non-mature gametes they will ever have. They will never make more. They can use meiosis and these processes to mature these non-mature gametes, and they do that uh, once puberty happens, but... Um, they do not ever produce more gametes than they, what they have at birth. All primary oocytes begin meiosis during embryonic development, but then stop until female reaches puberty. So these oogonium are going to produce primary oocytes again, basically during embryonic development. And what do I mean by embryonic development? This happens while the female is a fetus in embryo state. None of this happens um, post-birth. Once the female reaches puberty, though, one primary oocyte, this, one of these per month, is going to be able or allowed to um, complete the first meiotic division, and then the second uh, or the secondary oocyte is released. This is released from the ovary, moves into the oviduct. Uh, that is a process called ovulation, and that happens typically once per month, um, and one of these primary oocytes is going to be released at, at once per month. Now, it doesn't have to ha happen once per month. Um, it may miss some months, or multiple primary oocytes may be released at the same time. 
If the secondary oocyte is fertilized, meiosis 2 is completed quickly, and the haploid nuclei of the ovum and sperm fuse to produce a diploid zygote. So this is going to happen basically right at um, the beginning of the month, post-puberty. Um, this secondary oocyte is going to be released. That's a process called ovulation. If the secondary oocyte is to be fertilized or is being fertilized, the second meiotic division happens really quickly. The ovum is produced and the sperm cell nuclei and the ovum nuclei fuse. It produces a diploid zygote and that zygote hopefully implants itself into the endometrium or the inner kind of lining of the uterus and that will develop as a baby or develop as a fetus embryo and then it eventually into a baby um, and will go through a nine month gestation period and then will be born um, in a happy celebration joyous occasion okay unfertilized oocytes are lost during menstruation along with uterine tissue until menopause this process in females only occurs until the female reaches menopause which means at, after that point no more reproductive cells can be produced and therefore the female cannot successfully uh, reproduce okay this entire process takes roughly 12 to 50 years now obviously that is a substantial difference than the number of days that it takes for a male to produce gametes and those days are kind of broken up into these um, sections the formation of these oogonia take roughly two to three months after conception so once the egg and sperm cell come together that's a process called conception um, fertilization conception and these oogonium are formed roughly two to three months after that uh, two to three months into gestation these primary oocytes are going to be produced and they wait as a primary oocyte until ovulation occurs. Now that can take 12, 13, 14 years because remember ovulation is not going to happen until puberty in the females. Okay, The female will not release an egg until puberty happens. Once puberty happens the eggs will be released once per month and it takes roughly less than one day when fertilization occurs to take the secondary oocyte and produce a uh, hap haploid ovum the mature egg cell okay that's the ovum that's all i got that goes through the processes of spermatogenesis and oogenesis those are the two gamete formation processes in males and females um, obviously you can see that mitosis plays a role and meiosis plays a role bring your questions to class see ya